Do you hate videos where people ramble on about nothing before getting to the point? So do I. So make sure you check the chapters if you just want to get to the bit that you want. Recently, Bamboo Lab released a video of their new H2D machine, which does plotting and drag knifing and all sorts of other things. And we're going to see if we can do exactly the same on this old girl here. So you've seen the video, uh, that new printer does all sorts of things other than just 3D print, which is great because you can use it for laser cutting and drag cutting, which is cutting vinyl or, or pen plotting. So you're thinking pen plotting is the least used feature I have on that printer, and you're probably right, but pen plotting is the gateway drug to everything else. If you can pen plot, you can laser engrave, and you can cut out vinyl with a drag knife. So once you've got those bits and pieces or pen plotting working, everything else will fall into line. So if you're wondering why the workshop's more of a mess than it normally is, it's because I'm leaving house and I've got to box everything up and place this bit of a shambles. But it's not going to affect this video, most of it's going to be on the computer anyway. So uh, buckle up and let's get into it. Okay, let's get into it. Maybe ignore that hot mess behind me and just focus on Alan. So we had a couple of key requirements for this project. Uh, we want to be able to um, be able to still use the 3D printer as it is. So I don't want to remove any functionality. I want to be able to just clip something on and clip it off and seamlessly swap between the two processes of pen plotting and uh, 3D printing. And the other thing, it has to be easy to do, because I've seen, you've probably seen them all if you've done a bit of a web search, dozens of videos about converting files or using files on a 3D printer for pen plotting. They all, well, ones I've seen, they've all been a bit of a nightmare. You've got to install Inkscape, which is perfectly fine, and some other plugins. And these plugins come up with all sorts of numbers. What do you put on there? What's right? Who knows? This process, we're just going to go through converting the file to something that the uh, printer will understand. It'll just go and do it. So there's a bit of setup involved. But once that's done, it's done for good. You don't need to do it again. So it's a piece of cake. And this will all be covered in my Patreon where you'll join for free. It doesn't cost anything. You just join for free. There'll be a blog post there which will have the uh, batch file that I'm using for Windows. A link to the the other software you'll need to get up and running and just a whole step by step but this video just gives you the, the crux of it so you can decide well is that something i really want to do so our first step is to alter our slicer so i use cura i believe the same features will be available at any slicer they're pretty pretty standard things but we want to be able to make sure that our original settings aren't affected by this new feature so what we'll do is we'll just jump into cura and have a look so at the top Left here we've got the printer that we're using, so I've got an end of 3, uh, V2. And what I want to do is I want this to be left alone, so any changes I make don't make any problems for this existing printer. So we we'll just go down here. I've already made another printer, but we'll just um, go through the process so you, you know what you got to do. So we're just going to manage printers, add a new one. It's not an Ultimaker, it's not networked. We'll just go down and find a Creality. Just keep all our regular settings in here. Nothing needs to be changed. Or we'll just rename it to something that makes sense to us. Let's call it line plotter so we know what it is. And we'll go through and just do look at the machine settings. And this is the, kind of the only place we need to change things. When the machine starts every time, it looks at this beginning bit called start G code. And it's the first thing it's going to do before it starts printing your job. And if you ever used a 3D printer before, you'll know it has a purge line. So it goes over to the far side of the, the bed, puts down a line, a layer of filament just to clean up, I guess, and then starts printing. And of course, with a line plotter, we don't want to do that sort of at all. Uh, we just want it to home and then sit and wait for the commands to start drawing our diagram. So in here, we need to remove all the G1 codes so they aren't in there anymore. So when the printer starts, none of those G1 actions work. All it does is sits there and waits, and then starts to draw. If you're not sure what to get rid of in here, just copy and paste that entire thing in the chat GPT, and just tell it you want the start G code, so the print head doesn't move anywhere, and then spit out what you need for it to do. So if I go back to my one that's currently working, when you see my start G code is totally stripped out, it just uh, resets the extruder, homes all the accesses, moves the Z up, a bit and then resets the extruder. We don't really care about the extruder for this because we're not using the extruder at all. It'll still be running, but it'll be before you start. You'll obviously want to pull all the filament out, so it's just running dry. The beauty of this is I've got two different printers completely separated from each other, so I don't have to worry about what's happening between jobs. So if I want to print on my 3D printer, I can just choose my original 
3D printer printer if I want to use the line plotter I'll just choose the line plotter printer and then I've got a line plotter so they're separated I should be able to swap between the two easily the other thing that we need to do is alter the printer profile because there's a few things that you want to happen when printing the file again I've just created a preset here and we'll call it um, crycat because eventually we will be using a drag knife and it will probably be pretty similar to the settings we use between the two and what we want to do is change a couple of settings in here to um, make sure we're getting the right result out of the printhead so what we do is I'll just go through these individually I won't um, go in too much detail if you set the same things you should be up and running so you want to set your wall count to one because you only want the pen to go around the your outside or perimeter of your object once we want to ensure that enable retraction is turned on and I think that would probably be the case for any 3d printer you just about always use retraction and then we want to alter the z hop this is a z hop height so what happens when it retracts it's going to go up when it's retracting and that's us lifting the pen or the knife off the paper and i've set it to two millimeters you could probably make it one millimeter it doesn't really matter but as long as it's lifting quite far off your media so you can move and go down and when it starts again it'll drop back down to where it was another two millimeters down and start drawing because we don't want lines going between all our different items on the page that just keeps the retraction or lifts it up moves it across drops it down starts printing again and the other thing we need to change is the temperature we just want to set those base to zero because obviously we're not using any heat to um, use the pen which is great because as soon as you start the print you'll see results straight away because the printer's not waiting for anything to heat up it'll just start drawing pretty much immediately so you want to save that profile is whatever you want to call it line plotter profile crack up I'm not too too sure either one doesn't matter so this means that if you have chosen your line plotter printer over this profile you should just start printing so once we've got our cure up and running we need to get our file ready and there's a couple of ways uh, to do that i suggest you definitely get familiar with inkscape if you're going to be using pen plotting or final cutting Inkscape is a free piece of software that lets you edit uh, vector files or SVGs, which is what this all will understand when we're, we're printing them out. So this is an SVG I downloaded uh, directly off the internet and opened an Inkscape. If I'm in Inkscape, I can go through and edit dots and move things around if I want to or create my own files. You don't have to use Inkscape. I just, it's a good tool to have. It's it's, it's got a myriad of button things make it look a bit daunting but it's actually pretty straightforward and we would have seen on the other videos of people using 3d printers as pen plotters using inkscape and then they would have opened their file and then going up to extensions g-code tools and use one of these features uh to export it it's all too confusing i think and a lot harder than it needs to be because it pops up windows and wants numbers and just stuff but i mean credit to the guy who made it it's probably really good for someone who's right into it but for me it's a bit too much to try and take on so that's our file and what we're going to do is um to print that svg we're going to convert it to a 3d file str which you'll be familiar with with um your 3d printer and we're going to use something software another piece of free software called open scad so this is open SCAD, it doesn't look like much, but what it is, it's a sort of a geometric maths version of CAD software where you type in vectors or whatever and it creates your files. So I've used in the past for creating gears, 3D printable gears for projects. It's, it's really pretty good for those sorts of things. But for us, we're just going to keep it simple and just have these two lines here where it's just going to extrude our SVG 0.2 millimeters we're going to save it as an STL and then we're going to import that into the um, Cura software so we could do this manually we could open the file and just push the buttons and do all this sort of thing but it's because it's command line based we can just create a batch script which does all that for us so what we're going to do is drag our SVG on top of this batch file it converts to STL and we can print it so here's our batch file I'm not going to go through it step by step but essentially you just drag your file on top of this batch file it converts to STL that comes out again all this will be on my patreon page as a post just join up for free uh, so just a quick demo of what it looks like when you're trying to use it 
We've got the dinosaur outline SVG file here. I'll just drag it on top of convert. Pops up with this dialog here just saying that it's trying to convert all the facets to a 3D printable file. Um, we could not have this come up, but it's good if there's any errors or it tells you if anything's wrong. It's nice to know what's happened. You hear my laptop ramping up there as it tries to convert it. And it's all done, and it's saved it as dinosaur outline.stl. Just press enter to continue. And we can see there's an extra file here that's generated for our printing. So we double click on that one. And we see at the moment the file's too big, but of course, for anything we care, we can scale it up and down. If you are going to scale your file up and down, don't do uniform because we need the layer height to be 0.2 millimeters for it to be able to be sliced properly. So I'll just drop it down to 50% for the X and the Y. And there's the file there, ready to be processed. We make sure we're in our line plotter printer. We've got our color card or whatever you've named it, profile and slice it. You may see, well you can't actually see, but down the bottom here it says zero minutes to print. But if we can move the, we can move the tool around, we can see that the pen or well, the hot end is going to go and draw this outline for our marker. This is just the outline because um, I wanted to draw an outline around this dinosaur image, but the other one is you can um, blood fill it like you'll, you'll see shortly. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle is getting the pen actually onto the printhead of the machine without having to do any major operation to swap things around. And fortunately on the um, end of this, well, there's probably most printers really, there's a few screws we can uh, take advantage of to mount on a, a bracket. So I'll just whip this one together in Fusion, and it's this red bit, and it's this cut sort of a V shape there that tapers. And what will happen is we'll get these um, little fittings like this, and it just slides on with a pen, and you can just swap them in and out as you please. I've just got these bunch of uh, permanent marker pens. For eight dollars, multiple colors, and it just um, clip it on and just moves around and does its thing. The other thing you need to do is print. My suggested method is to print a block or halo block, which is one millimeters, one millimeter thick, so we can set the Z offset for the printer pen because we don't want the nozzle on the paper, and we want the pen one millimeter lower than the nozzle. But not so low that it has a problem with the um, the BL touch. So you've got to sort of get in between. So what I do is I get a, a block of one millimeter. I lower down the print head until it's sitting on top of that block. Then drop the pen into the holder and screw it down when the pen is touching the paper. And that's calibrated that pen for the um, for the device. And then we're going to cure for the one more change. And that's the setting the Z offset to one millimeter. So the printer will actually be one millimeter up. But the pen will be touching onto the paper. It'll go through and do all its um, drawing. Once that's done, there might be a bit of tweaking of the Z offset. Perhaps just to get it sort of bang on. Uh, it'd be best if working with what that is and put that into your original file. Because you don't want the Z offset default on the printer. Not for your nozzle, right? For the actual proper printing, because then you go back and change it again. So you want to just adjust it in your file so as close as you can uh, you can get it. But um, we'll get onto printing this file and see what it looks like. So here's kind of the joys of using a 3D printer as a pen plotter. It's sort of a massively over-engineered pen plotter, to be honest. Especially if using software like uh, Clipper, we can go in and just reprint the same thing over and over. So in the years Clipper, I've got all my um, previous jobs printed. So I can just click on that, print it. And it's going to fire it down and print it as long as I got paper on the bed. We're good to go. So all the bed leveling still works. Everything else still works as you'd expect. So if you had a really big bed on a 3D printer, this would be kind of ideal. This one's obviously 220 by 220, so we're pretty restricted in amount of size. But uh, otherwise, we're, we're kind of good to go. So when it comes to printing, there's no surprises here. I mean, for the bed plate, I just use bill clips to hold the paper down and clip it down. And then pretty much just press go and it goes and draws the outline and prints everything called muses ink of the pen to mark onto the um, paper. If you're going to use something thicker like wood or cardboard 
you just use that to when you do the homing you'll just home onto the top of that thicker material and there'll be its start point so you can start drawing on pretty much you think if you like My print bird's got a bit of a hole in it, I don't use this printer anymore so it doesn't really worry me too much but you'll see on there there's a bit of a white spot where it's drawing and that's just a, a sort of a divot in the line and I've proved a bed unfortunately so I might get a like a proper plate to put on top of it uh, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. That pretty much sums up as far as uh, pen plotting is concerned. I mentioned in the video we're going to do some uh, sort of vinyl cutting with a, the drag knife. We'll get onto that in the next video. I was going to get a cry cut or cricket or cricket knife uh, for this video, but they're fifty dollars for one blade, so no way. Rolling colors have been around for donkey's years, and I can get like thirty blades and a holder for twenty dollars. So that's in the mail, so we can try it uh, next time. As I mentioned before, the um, all the docs for this, or how to do this step by step, will be in my Patreon page. So if I've missed something in the video, you should definitely check out the docs, because there's bound to be something I've, I've forgotten. If you made it this far, you should definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching.